Bill O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News. Wednesday, July 6, 2022. Stand up for your country. It was pretty amusing. I was uh, reading um, some of the commentary today, and George Soros has a column out where he laments that democracy is in danger in America. And that's true uh, largely because of George Soros. <laughs> I mean, this is what... People have no idea who they really are. So Soros doesn't see himself as the devil. He sees himself as some kind of benevolent guy who injects dark money into the a democratic system to make sure that laws are not enforced and that the border remains open. But he thinks he's doing good things there. So this was all about the Supreme Court, you know, the usual uh, left-wing point of view, but I got to pretty big kick out of it. But the bigger threat to democracy, which is not amusing in any way, is the corrupt media, and that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. First, the data. So Gallup is a poll out taken over a three-week period in June. 1,015 adults, party affiliation, Democrat 28, Republican 28, Independent 42, fair poll. And they asked the folks, um, trust. Do you trust television news? A great deal, 4%. I guess those are the people who run the television news. In, that's it. Quite a lot, 7 So only 11% trust the television news industry in the USA. And the rest don't. 49% have no trust. And very little trust in television. Now, I worked in this industry, I have worked in it, um, for 47 years now. And I started when I was 12, you know, so you can make all those jokes. Um, but when I started, it wasn't corrupt. And over a period of time, it became more and more and more and more corrupt. Why? When I started, the corporations, generally speaking, and I worked for corporations from day one, they stayed out of the news arena because they said, all right, we need it, you know, to bolster our image, but we're not looking to make a lot of money off it. And so we'll leave it alone and not inject ourselves, you know, how corporations can be. Well, around 1996, that all changed because of me. And I, I'm the reason it changed. Because when the Fox News Channel was invented in 96, Nobody felt that it was going to be anything. All right. Now, CNN was around and MSNBC had just started. The network news programs did make money. All right. The Today Show, Good Morning America, and the nightly news made a little bit. 60 Minutes made the most because that was a primetime hit. But the money really wasn't extraordinary in the corporate media. So Disney, they don't, they didn't in the past, make money off The View. Only two million people watch The View. They make a little money, but not a lot. They make their money in animation and theme parks. But then, as the Fox News Channel, and in particular the O'Reilly Factor, became dominant in this country, literally billions of dollars flowed in to the news corporation, which owned Fox News. Billions, with a B. Everybody saw that. And they said, we're going to do this too. We're going to make billions of dollars. And that was the end. That was the end of it. Now, at Fox News, when I started, I was totally independent. Nobody told me what to say or do ever because they knew that I wouldn't put up with it because I told them that. When I left, after 20 plus years, that rule for me was still in place but not for everybody. So now, almost all the commentators and reporters on television news, whether it's network news or cable news, do what they are told. Though there is a management level that dictates what you will see and hear. CNN is the best example of that because the dictum went out, we hate Trump, you are to get uh, information and commentary to destroy him. Across the board. And that's what CNN did. MSNBC is, another, is different because 
they tried to imitate Fox News. Fox News tilted right into the traditional conservative precincts to give those people something to watch. They didn't have anything to watch before Fox News. So MSNBC said, well, we're going to do this left. They were not successful. They aren't successful now. They make some money, but, you know, it's, it's not anything like the Fox News juggernaut remains. They still make billions of dollars. They're selling off my numbers still. So anyway, once the corporations got in to television news and started to dictate what Americans would see and hear, then everything changed. Now, there are good reporters, obviously, they, you know, reporters that bring you honest information, but they are heavily outnumbered. And when Trump came in, he blew everything up because it was either we love Trump or we hate Trump. That was it. And the audience that hated him went in to watch the hate. The audience that loved him went in to watch the love. And you can't run a information agency based on partisan politics if you want people to believe you. So that's what happened. So uh, the next thing on a Gallup poll was newspapers. Uh, 16% of Americans trust newspapers um, and uh, 80% don't. That's a different thing. Newspapers never made a lot of money, all right? There are three dominant newspapers, or there used to be, in America. The New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Los Angeles Times, okay? All three of those newspapers decided not to be newspapers when Trump got elected. Now they are supporters of the Democratic Party. That's what they are, okay? Those papers... They work with the Democrats to promote what the Democrats and liberal America wants. And that's it across the board. Look at the contributors on the op-ed page of the New York Times. There are no doctrinaire conservatives at the paper, none. And there are like 12 to 15 liberals. Washington Post has George Will, but we all know about poor George and what happened to him. I'm not even going to bother with it anymore. If you don't know... Him, then you, that's okay. L.A. Times almost out of business. They're so militant left. I mean, they wanted to keep uh, the guy in San Francisco, the DA that was recalled. They wanted to keep him. They had no problem with him. <laughs> it's, when you get that extreme, most people are going, you know, I'm not going to read this. Now, the only reason these newspapers remain in business, most of them across the country, is the sports page. People read it for sports. And even sports is now getting infected. So let me wrap this talking points memo up because we have a lot of good information for you tonight. When 330 million Americans cannot get honest information, democracy gets hurt. All right, the Washington Post's uh, motto is democracy dies in darkness. Okay, well, okay, Washington Post, uh, your spotlight is on liberals promoting that. That's what you do. Okay, so don't tell me democracy dies in darkness when you're part of the darkness. So when we the people can't get the truth or facts, verifiable facts, how can we make decisions? You know, I've told you over and over and over, people believe what they want to believe right now in America. That is the trend. They don't care whether it's true or not. They want to believe it, they're going to believe it. If you want to believe that the election of 2020 was a fraud, a massive fraud, that's what you're going to believe. Right? And if you want to believe that Donald Trump was a fascist dictator who wanted the Capitol to be looted and destroyed... That's what you're going to believe. Doesn't matter what the facts are. Just doesn't matter. And even if they find facts, if the facts go against the narrative, like Hunter Biden, right? If the facts go against the narrative, we all know Hunter Biden is a grifter, that he made millions and millions of dollars because his father was vice president. Everybody knows that. That's not in dispute. They don't report it. Black it out. So that's what Gallup found out. 
that there's no trust anymore in the television news or the newspaper industries. And when you can't get honest information, so every, all the people are now going to the internet for information. That's insane. There are no editors there. There's nobody there that says, hey, Lenny, you can't say that about O'Reilly if it isn't true. Lenny can say whatever he wants. It's, it's frightening. That is the big reason our country is in decline right now. That's the big reason Joe Biden's president. He doesn't deserve to be president. He is a terrible president. Everybody's getting hurt. And who backed him? Who backed Joe Biden for that job? You know who. That's a memo. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is the leading conservative advocacy and benefits organization in America. I am an AMAC member, and you should be too. AMAC gives you access to exclusive benefits, insightful takes on today's news, and a magazine full of uncensored content that you will not find anywhere else. Most importantly, AMAC is working tirelessly to preserve the freedoms enshrined and secured by our Constitution. AMAC has become one of the most impactful organizations in America because more than just talk, AMAC gets things done. They are pushing back against the efforts to defund our police, weaken the borders, and replace your freedom with government control. But they need your help. Stand with me and more than 2 million patriots and join AMAC today at amac.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. AMAC dot U-S and tell them O'Reilly sent you. And on the subject of the president, he went to Cleveland, Ohio, to talk about the uh, American Rescue Plan's financial assistance program. Nobody knows what that is. I will tell you what it is. So the federal government is not going to bail out companies that can't pay their pension obligations to workers. Is that a good thing? Well, you don't want the, the fo- workers to get screwed on their pensions, right? But... You know, when you have a federal government that continues to spend trillions and trillions of dollars on everything, who's watching this? I don't know. But that's what he's doing. I don't condemn it because I don't want, you know, you work 30 years in a company and then the company doesn't have enough to pay your pension. Government's got to help you out. Okay. Another, this is the same Gallup poll, a different question. Uh, It said... Um, please tell me how much confidence you have in the presidency. 23% of Americans have confidence in the presidency at this moment. Okay. That's down from 38% when Biden took office. All right. 15% down under Trump. What do you think it was? Take a guess. Confidence in the presidency under Trump. What do you think? 39%. Now it's 23 Economic stats for June. This is why Joe Biden is doomed with a capital D. S&P 500 down 9% in the month of June. Stocks went into a bear market in the month of June. S&P's worst first six months, 2022, since 1970. Dow Jones suffered its worst first half of the year, 2022 since 1962, when JFK was president. So Biden has obliterated the dismal economic performance of the Carter administration. He now stands alone in destroying the American economy and every single American is suffering because of it. So when he says, I'm gonna run again, you just go, sure. All right, so Gavin Newsom in Florida, uh, Florida, Gavin Newsom in California, the governor there, he knows that Biden's toast. He knows he's done. So he wants to get out ahead because Gavin Newsom and his hair moose want to be in the Oval Office. So Gavin Newsom spends a lot of money taking out a political ad that runs in Florida on the 4th of July. Go. It's Independence Day, so let's talk about what's going on in America. Freedom, it's under attack in your state. Republican leaders, they're banning books, making it harder to vote. 
restricting speech in classrooms, even criminalizing women and doctors. I urge all of you living in Florida to join the fight or join us in California, where we still believe in freedom, freedom of speech, freedom to choose, freedom from hate, and the freedom to love. Don't let them take your freedom. Paid for by Newsom for California Governor 2022. All right, so there's Newsom. Um, <laughs> he's running for president. No, he's also running for governor. He'll win there in California. But no, it, that's his first presidential ad, attacking Florida. Who's he attacking, really? DeSantis. Okay, we're way ahead of this. And here, here's an interesting aside on Governor Newsom. So Florida, um, Florida, God, O'Reilly, get into it here. California will not do business with Montana because Montana doesn't have a gay legislation that California likes or something. California won't do business with the state of Montana. Well, where is Gavin Newsom right now? Vacationing in Montana. (laughs) I gotta love it, right? Inflation at its highest level in 40 years. Interest rates skyrocketing. We all know that. Market experts like Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan, not only predict a recession, but are using scary terms like economic hurricane and unprecedented. So you need to call the only precious metal dealer I trust, American Hartford Gold. They will show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. Please call them today and they will have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. They have thousands of satisfied customers of the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you and they'll give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. Please call 866-501-5201. 866-501-5201 or text BILL to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201 or text BILL to 65532. Okay, here's the final thought of the day. If you didn't see my takedown of J.B. Pritzker, the governor of Illinois, who's a corrupt guy, in my opinion, uh, please, uh, we have it on BillOReilly.com, but I have more stats for you. Now, here's a guy who wants to ban guns or all that other stuff, take them away from law-abiding people in Illinois. That's what he wants to do. He was elected governor in January 2019, took office, January 19, okay? Since that time, since that time, there have been approximately 3,500 murders in Illinois. Three and a half years of Pritzker, 3,500 murders in that state. He has done nothing, nothing. No state police in the uh, neighborhoods of Chicago where people are being gunned down every day, including children. No. Why? Because most of the perpetrators are African-American drug gangs. That's why. But most of the victims are African-Americans. More than 80% of them in Illinois. That's racism, JB. You're okay with 3,500 murders in your three and a half years in office? And you're up for re-election. If I was running against you, that's all people would hear. You don't care about poor minorities who are being slaughtered by drug gangs. You don't care. Awful. And to have this guy get out there screaming sanctimoniously about, oh, they're guns, or we're going to ban them, and enough's enough, and you've done nothing? Nothing. To stop that Holocaust in your state? You have the nerve to go out and tell law-abiding citizens who want to protect themselves from your corruption? They can't? I mean, this is beyond. I'm sorry. This man is beyond the pale. And you know what? People in Illinois don't know it because they're not paying attention and there's no media that's going to throw it out there. That they don't know the level of corruption in Springfield. My job, J.B. Pritzker, the worst governor 
in the country. Thank you for watching and listening to the No Spin News. We'll see you tomorrow. If you are stuck in a timeshare and you haven't called Lone Star Transfer yet, what are you waiting for? Lone Star Transfer has helped more than 16,000 happy customers. They are family owned, have a 99% success rate. Their process is done legally, ethically, and quickly. I mean, does it get better than that? The team at Lone Star Transfer will keep you informed every step of the way until you are legally and permanently released from your timeshare. So don't pay another penny for a timeshare you don't use. Get peace of mind today with Lone Star Transfer. They guarantee the release of all liability to your timeshare in writing and in a specific time frame. Give Lone Star Transfer a call for a free no obligation consultation. 855-551-7066, 855-551-7066 or online at LoneStarTransfer.com. Bill O'Reilly is back on TV and only on The First. No Spin News, every weeknight at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on The First.